Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Thursday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early. It's 5.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, if I was off my game yesterday, I am on my game today. Um, okay, I already did one video where I talked about Danny Masterson. Um, and I mentioned in that last video how I want to talk about another story about uh, a woman called Talia the Creator on TikTok. The links will be right down below. And I mentioned in my last video how I want to talk about that. And so I downloaded the last video and I started going about my usual day, a couple hours of working out, as you can see here. And I just stopped dead cold because I remembered I was already thinking about, I was, I was wondering how I would approach this next video. Uh, and it hit me. You know, I, I had kind of been thinking about something similar that has to do with this. I had been thinking about this a lot in the last week. And I decided to put down the weights and just, that's why I'm, the, I'm going back to my weightlifting. I'm not taking off. These clothes are tight and they're hard to get on and off. It's, I'm not wearing them because I think they look cool. It's just a pain. They're, they're too small for me. And uh, anyway, okay, the video, the, the story is it's about Talia, the creator. She was on an airline. It's this uh, TikTok personality. And she does travel videos. She's a black woman. And she was on a plane recently, and there was a white man sitting next to her on the plane. And she happened to look over, and right in his lap, if you look to one side or the other side, it was obvious to her. She, she read his text. He was texting to somebody. And he was complaining about having to sit next to a large black woman. And, he, and apparently, he went on to text. This is her reading his text that maybe the airlines should raise the prices to weed these people out. And he was talking about uh, different colors, different oriented, sexual orientations and whatnot. He feels that he, he, him and his family shouldn't have to sit next to these people. Uh, you know, and I, of course, you know, there's a lot of different taste on this. I was going to talk about, there was a controversy of, you know, was it okay for her to look over at his, at his what he was, uh, you know, his private, semi-private conversation. That's not what I'm going to talk about. Cause it suddenly occurred to me. I've been thinking about something to do. This has been popping up in my mind, especially the video I did about biking just uh, yesterday has to do with this. You know, after that incident, if you watch the video where I said I went to confront a driver, has a lot to do with this. I started thinking about where I grew up, and that's what I'm going to talk about. Because uh, this man's complaining. You know, he, he feels that these people are, uh, it, it makes him uncomfortable. There's, you know, the, I guess, I, I don't know if it's music or the size of the people or the language or, I don't know what he f takes offense to, but I, this had popped up in my thoughts just recently, I grew up in a town, a small town, a small 99.7%, I think, Caucasian. Seriously, it's a small town in Connecticut of 6,000 people. I lived there pretty much my entire life, all right? It used to be a blue collar, I wouldn't call it lower middle class. It was a working class kind of factory town. Seth Thomas, world famous Seth Thomas clocked Thomas in Connecticut. That's the town. And over people have got the people in town, more affluent people have moved in. And it's more upper middle class where you see a lot of there's just all there was all Trump signs in the last couple of years, Republican, this and that. And large, large houses being built everywhere, boats and SUVs and mobile homes. And so it's kind of changed its dynamic. And I thought I thought of an incident. I thought of what happened to me. And then I moved here to this city. Bristol, Connecticut. It's a city. It's a de pretty, pretty much what you'd call a Democrat city. It's, it's got a Democrat history. Although right now, I think a Republican was just narrowly won the mayor's seat, but it's basically a Democrat leaning city of 60,000 people. And I was kind of, you know, I was, I don't know, I wouldn't call it afraid, but you know, I lived in a small town my whole life. And, uh, you know, I grew up alone. You know, I grew up in a state park. You know, so I, I was a little, I wasn't scared, but you know, I, I wondered what it had, what it had in store for me. And honestly, living here, this is the bottom line. In this city, multicultural. I have there's all different colors and people, all different colors and religions of people all around me. It has been way more friendly, a hundred times more friendly and comfortable living in this town than it was in the town I grew up with. And I'll, I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna take an example. Now, I grant you, I'm, I, you call, I don't wanna call this cherry picking. I thought of the incident with the bike that just happened to me. Like I, I mentioned that he was a very large young man, Hispanic. 
right? And he, I, he almost hit me on the bike. And I thought I was going to, you know, I was getting all angry. I was ready to, to be in a serious confrontation. He rolls down the window and he just, he admitted, you know, he says, I, I'm sorry. He says, I, I wasn't thinking. I pulled up too close to you. And it just changed my whole outlook. Okay. Then I thought back. I thought, you know, because there's every day here, I'm amazed. Uh, I have, there's two black women that I bump into almost every morning. And they, they're probably in their 70s. And they go for a walk together every morning. And I see them when I'm going on my bike ride. And they're like, hey, here he is. And they're so friendly. One day I was pumping up my tire. And they were actually driving that day in a van. And they stopped. And they almost, they, they, they thought there was something wrong with my bike. And they almost insisted that I get in the car. With, that I load my bike into the car so they could help me. And I tell them, I said, no, it's because it's I'm just putting air in my tire. I, you know, I appreciate it. And then, you know, every single day, I swear, there's at least seven, eight people that say, hey, hi, I, you know, and they'll say, how many miles do you walk a day? You know, and I, I get in these conversations. It's a very friendly town. And the majority of people that I'm talking to are Hispanic, African-American, and most, mostly that's the people I'm talking to. And, you know, this is, I, I don't want to say I didn't expect this, but I swear to God, I feel part of this community. The community I came from, like I said, was mostly Republican leaning in these last years before I moved. And it felt hostile. It felt divided. I really felt like when I, wherever I ran into anybody, you know, the, the people I would run to the supermarket wouldn't ask me how many miles I biked that day. They'd ask me what I do for a job, what I do for work, because they, they think I should be working, you know, seriously. Uh, there was a, it was a hostile environment, it, much more hostile in that town. And I thought about this. So I, I was talking about the incident with the bike just happened a day or two ago. And so I was trying, I thought back to, an, you know, because there's been plenty of incidents with me on my bike. And I thought back to an incident that happened with a Caucasian gentleman, an older Caucasian gentleman. Same kind of situation. Let me tell you how that went. This is in the, the town, the little Caucasian suburban town I grew up in. Let me tell you how that one went. Uh, I was coming down a, a large hill. I had my gloves on and the bike lever, uh, the brake lever, got stuck in here. And I still was able to hit the brakes, but I wasn't able to stop as quick. And I went through a stop sign. I wasn't in danger of getting hit, but I, normally I would have stopped. You know, the, the, a tr the truck was coming probably a, a couple hundred feet up the road, moved along pretty quick. Yeah, it, it was, I, I usually would have stopped, but because of my, the brake lever being stu stuck, I couldn't. And I went across the road and I proceeded down the hill with the truck coming up behind me. All of a sudden, this truck comes up and I swear on the Holy Bible, this guy came across the white line and came within inches inches. I, I swear I could feel the, the rear view mirror, passenger side, passenger side rear view mirror, go right by my arm. You know, he swerves in right next to me and then continues going, you know, and I am, you know, this is my life. This is my life and limb. I'm outraged, you know. So a lot of times these guys, the people that do this don't realize that they're going to have to stop and they don't realize how fast I can move on a bike. Sure enough, there's a stoplight, and he has to stop about a half mile up. I see him stop at a stoplight, and I'm like, oh, yeah, man, here I come. And I speed up, speed, speed up. I and mean, this is right in the center of town, right during midday. So there's cars everywhere, and he stopped right at the intersection. And I go right up to his driver's side window, and I just started going off. What the F is wrong with you? You almost killed me. And he just, at first, he rolls down the window. You know, I'm in the middle of the road yelling at this dude in the middle of the day. I don't realize the whole town is watching me. He rolls down the window and he looks, he's like, what? Uh, 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 like that at first, at first. And I said, what, what, you know, what is wrong? And I kept it up. And then, you know what he did? He admitted it. He goes, you know what? I, he says, he says, it serves you right. Cutting out in front of me. He says, I was teaching you a lesson. Swear on the Bible. That's what this guy told me because of the situation where, you know, I didn't cut directly out in front of him. I normally would have stopped the stop sign, you know, but because of the technical problems, I, I, I pulled out where I wouldn't have usually pulled out. Like I said, he was a couple hundred feet up the road. You know, he, didn't, he probably didn't even have to hit his brakes, but he still took offense to this. 
and he needed to teach me a lesson by endangering my life, possibly killing me. You know, all it would take is for me to be startled. I was doing about 35 miles an hour to just move over a couple inches, hit the curb. You know, it literally was just inches away from hurting or worse, hurting me or worse, because he wanted to teach me a lesson. Oh, man, I, I tell you that I, I lost it at that point. And I just I, I, told, I said, I'll make you my F and B. And I'm screaming this. Yeah, I said, get out, get out of the car truck right now. And I'm screaming this as the light turns green and he drives down the road. At that point, I realized I looked like a raving lunatic. This is about three, four years ago. And everybody in the center of town is looking at me. Um, when I went to the store after that, like different stores, I noticed people kind of <laughs> stood off, uh, or didn't, didn't approach me as much. Um, you're talking about my, I'm talking about my life and limb, but this guy admitted that you know, he was teaching me a lesson because I, he thought I pulled out on my bike in front of his truck too quick, endangered, endangering my life. You know, and I was just thinking about the two different, this, what I'm getting at here, this city, this multicultural uh, city with uh, the most of the people that I interact with through the day are African American Hispanic, uh, Asian American, probably more than Caucasian. I live right in the center of town, and it's a, it's probably the most urban part of the, of the city right here. And uh, I've had my my I've talked about my MAGA barber in other videos, and he calls it the uh, the hood. You know, he lives in Thomaston in the small town, and uh, I swear to God, I swear to God, this is one of the friendliest, kindest most outgoing concern for each other places I've ever lived. I am amazed. This is the reason I'm saying this is because this man on this airplane with, with Talia, the creator, was saying how, you know, he didn't like to sit next to these people. Well, you know what? Like I, I'm not putting down anybody, Caucasian or not, but what I found is a lot of times I'm better off sitting next to people of different cultures. I can learn a little bit. A lot of times, uh, they're a lot more friendly than MAGA Republicans, swear to God. All right, you guys, the, the links will be down below for Talia's video, so you can watch it yourself, and her TikTok uh, page will be right down below. Have a good Thursday.